The Himalayas For millions of years, the movement of tectonic plates and other geological activities have shaped Earth's history, leading to the creation of new elements that make up our planet. This is one of the biggest, most impressive processes you can think of, and one of its results is mountains. Right now, for example, we can witness the grandeur of the Himalayas. The collision of the Indo-Australian and Eurasian tectonic plates around 70 million years ago resulted in the formation of this mountain range at the junction of Central and South Asia with grandiose dimensions. Approximately 1,800 miles long and 220 miles wide, covering an area of about 250,000 square miles. Additionally, these mountains boast the highest number of peaks exceeding 26,000 feet above sea level. Ten of them are located here out of a total of 14 worldwide. But you're probably not watching this video just to admire the scenery. We talked about the Himalayas because there's a chance a huge tunnel will be built there soon. Tunnel. Who came up with this idea? China, which has a decent chunk of the Asian mountains on its territory. Do you know what you can say about this idea? Ruth Gamble, an expert on the environment, culture, and climate of the Himalayas answers, it's insane. Pure insanity. And we can't help but agree. To start with, it's important to say that the tunnel the Chinese are planning to create is meant to be dug through rock. Naturally, there's a bunch of equipment available to tackle this kind of tough job. For example, tunnel boring machines? Suppose China could use one of the largest machines of this class called Bertha. With its help, drilling a tunnel under Seattle that was 1.7 miles long took four years. Yeah, it was under a city, which put some restrictions in place. Plus, there were a few mishaps that caused delays. But drilling a passage that long would have taken a good amount of time anyway. But we're talking about mountains here, in a remote area away from civilization. So we need to organize everything and deliver this massive thing weighing 6,700 tons, as well as provide fuel for the engine system with a total power of 12.1 megawatts or 16,500 horsepower. And yes, Bertha, for example, isn't around anymore since it became unusable after the job was finished. So you can't just rent it like that. There are other machines that are somewhat similar, but the Chinese mountain project is likely going to need something unique. And that costs a lot. Bertha itself, for instance, set them back $80 million. Plus, don't forget that building such a huge device will take a lot of time. They'll need different gear, set up a workspace, and a bunch of other stuff because they plan to channel the river through the tunnel. Basically, it's all going to be pricey and time-consuming. Power China, which is expected to carry out the project, is one of the largest construction and engineering companies in China, so they have the necessary funds. But handling the other issue will be a bit trickier. The river for which this tunnel is planned flows down into India. Unsurprisingly, people there consider this project the worst decision imaginable. Why is that? These kinds of works can create serious problems for people living downstream. Even more so, the problems could be disastrous. A single mistake or a job poorly done could unleash a torrent of water into regions that may have only faced similar incidents before, but never on such a large scale. Plus, it'll bring a bunch of rock along with it. There's also a risk of high water pollution levels coming from the Himalayas, so even if there aren't any immediate issues after a huge amount of water rushes down with the mountain debris, there will definitely be a long-term decline in people's quality of life. Overall, India rightly thinks the project is just a terrible idea. Project Goal Why does China need such a large-scale project, both in terms of work and costs? China is fully tapping into its rivers for hydropower projects. However, to achieve its declared goal of carbon neutrality by 2060, China is now looking at the rugged, wild, and hard-to-reach Yarlung Sangpo the longest river in Tibet and the fifth longest in all of China. It stretches for 700 miles and flows at an average altitude of 13,120 feet. Over the past few decades, the country's already made attempts to tap into the river's energy. Along its course, several hydroelectric plants have been built or are planned for construction. Here they are, marked on the map with red dots. But there's a spot that promises so much energy, way more than not just China, but all of humankind has ever seen. Let's travel a bit back in history. Take another look at this map. 
Here, the river has two different names, Yarlung Sangpo and Brahmaputra. This is easy to explain now. Remember that the river runs through both China and India? Well, that's why it has different names in those countries. And that's not all. The river also flows through Bangladesh, where it's called Jamuna. But that's not the point right now. Now everyone knows it's the same river, even though it has several names. In the past, though, people thought it was two different rivers, with the end of one and the start of the other being roughly in the same spot. Why? Because there weren't any decent studies of the area, and the elevation drop was just too big. The Brahmaputra is thousands of feet lower than the Yarlung Sangpo, which also made people think there were two rivers. Additionally, there were suggestions that the rivers were connected by a massive waterfall, but there's no way to confirm it. Entry to Tibet was banned. However, there were still some secret expeditions. For instance, in Charles Allen's book, he talks about how, at the end of the 19th century, an attempt was made to send 500 logs down the river to see if they would make it to India. It didn't pan out. But the information gathered during the mission turned out to be useful in figuring out that the rivers were actually connected. There was no waterfall. But there was a huge canyon carved by nature through the mountains of Namcha Barwa, which stands at 25,531 feet, and Gayala Perry stretching to 23,930 feet. Moreover, further studies in the 90s revealed that the Yarlung Sangpo River Canyon is the longest at 310 miles and the deepest measuring over 17,388 feet. Everyone loves comparisons, right? We do too, as they help us grasp the scale of certain things better. So picture this Tibetan canyon next to the American Grand Canyon. It looks massive and is probably one of the most impressive natural formations on our planet. However, its length is 277 miles and its depth is 6,100 feet. When it comes to length, the Tibetan version isn't far behind, but in terms of depth, the difference is way more significant. A group of researchers also concluded that we're looking at one of the biggest untapped hydroelectric resources on the planet. How so? Let's take a quick look at how hydroelectric power plants work. The kinetic energy of flowing water gets turned into mechanical energy that spins the turbine. This generates electricity. And how do they boost their output? By improving the efficiency of the turbines and generators, as well as increasing the head and flow of water. That's why the water flow at the plants goes through smaller areas relative to the dam. So to improve these parameters, China's looking to make a tunnel in the mountain. It'll let water rush down directly from roughly 9,800 feet to 2,600 feet without the pressure drop caused by the detours through the canyon. So by now, you've likely realized that the Chinese are planning to create a tunnel not just to let the water out of the canyon quicker. They also want to build a dam hydropower plant, which will be fed by all that water flowing along the route. Damn. Let's just say the Tibetan hydroelectric power station is still in the planning stage for now. According to some reports, it's expected to be up and running by 2045. However, there are certain things we can be somewhat sure about already. They say this station is going to be the biggest in the world. And when it comes to energy, you really don't think China would be scheming up a huge mega project to drill into a mountain just for some tiny numbers, do you? Experts say the canyon could potentially generate 60 gigawatts of power for the Chinese. To put that in perspective, that's nearly three times what the Three Gorges Dam produces, the biggest in the world. To give you an even better illustration, that planned capacity is just about half of what the UK's national grid has. Yep, that's an entire country, and not a small one at that. Plus, the dam and the entire system will help reduce carbon emissions by up to 200 million tons a year. In general, everything perfectly aligns with China's vision for its future. It's that same focus on becoming a country with zero emissions by 2060. Well, everything sounds great. However, not for those living downstream. Yeah, India is worried not just about the tunnel. The whole planned system is causing way more concern. Consequences for India To start with, we should mention that the worries mostly come from the neighborhood where the entire mega project is set to go up. This is Indus Yarlung Suture Zone. It came about from the collision between the Indian and Eurasian plates. 
By the way, check out how active the Indian plate used to be. It just crashed into the Eurasian plate about 55 million years ago, giving us the Himalayas and everything in that area. So right now, because of this shifting tectonic plate, the area near the upcoming hydroelectric system is pretty seismically active. Here's what the earthquake map looks like, showing all the quakes that have been recorded since 1900. You can see not just a bunch of little dots indicating minor quakes, but there are also bigger dots. They show that the region often gets hit by major seismic events with magnitudes ranging from 7 to 9. What could this lead to? I think it's pretty clear to everyone. It could result in the dam and other components of the system collapsing, followed by a breach. Also, serious negative effects on the state of the station can come from landslides caused by earthquakes. For instance, there was an accident that happened just upstream from where they planned to build the hydroelectric power station. A glacier in the mountains broke off dropping ice and rocks nearly 2.5 miles down. This will undoubtedly be a real disaster for people, nature, and the infrastructure downstream. Another issue troubling India is water pollution. It's nearly impossible to avoid even when building a regular dam, let alone an enormous system that involves drilling a huge tunnel. This leads to things like lower crop yields. And dirty water is never a good thing in general. Well, of course, there's drought. Putting up almost any dam disrupts aquatic life, rainfall runoff, and the riverbanks. There's no need to mention how much this messes up the areas that are already struggling with it. Even with all this, China's obviously determined to carry out its plan and show the world another huge project. China can actually avoid the potential issues for those downstream. They've got plenty of experience building massive hydroelectric plants. Three Gorges Dam Of course, we just have to mention the most massive dam China has ever built, and let's face it, maybe even the biggest one humanity's ever created. You've already heard its name a few times in today's video, the Three Gorges Dam. It's located on the Yangtze River, the largest artery of the People's Republic of China. In the beginning of the 20th century, Chinese engineers could already see its hydropower potential, and that's when the first discussions began about how to build such a massive structure, measuring 7,575 feet long and 607 feet tall. The construction took place between 1994 and 2012, and as a result, 32 power units were put into operation, including six underground ones. How much power do they generate? Well, the dam's record for today is about 22.5 gigawatts and the annual output is over 90 billion kilowatt hours. In terms of innovation and tech complexity, Three Gorges wouldn't break into the top tier of hydroelectric stations. The thing is, it's really basic. A standard gravity dam with a surface spillway, and most of it's just regular concrete. But the massive amount of concrete used has put the Three Gorges Dam at the top of another ranking. The structure weighs over 65.5 million tons, which makes it the heaviest construction in the world. We won't even bother asking you to picture it. That's just a lot. How much did this huge thing cost? Quite a bit, $30.5 billion. It's not a record, of course, but as of 2018, it ranked fifth in its category. Of course, building such a dam has had negative consequences for the environment. For instance, experts claim that millions of tons of sediment are washed up on the banks every year. Also, the construction of the dam inevitably harmed local wildlife. There was significant damage done to the nearly extinct Siberian crane. On top of that, it's mentioned that the dam's construction led to changes in temperature and water conditions, which also affected the fish living in the Yangtze. The Baihatan Dam Another great example of China's expertise in building huge hydroelectric projects is the Baihatan Dam located on the Jincha River. Let's talk about records right away. The dam power plant is 2,326 feet long and 948 feet high, making it the second largest by generated capacity at 16 gigawatts. As you might have guessed, the top spot goes to the Three Gorges Dam. The Chinese really know how to build powerful dams. China's second largest hydroelectric station holds the top spot in a less obvious ranking. Its turbines are the most powerful ever installed at a dam. The assembled machines stand 164 feet tall, weigh 8,000 tons, and have a nominal capacity of 1 gigawatt. 
Plus, the station is an arch-type dam. You've probably already noticed that compared to the Three Gorges Dam, on top of that, it's the largest dam of its kind in the world. Yet another record for Chinese hydropower engineering. It's important to note that a lot of experts point out the amazing speed of building such a challenging structure. Baiyatan went up in just four years. You could say China's more than ready to build a massive hydroelectric dam with a tunnel in Tibet. Putting up huge, complex structures in a relatively short time isn't a problem. And that's despite the potential consequences. 